Hi everyone, Quiveen here from the comfort of my kitchen. In today's video, we will be taking a look beyond our solar system at deep sky objects. Deep sky objects are the clouds of gas, the groups of stars, the other galaxies that lie outside of our solar system. So we won't be paying attention to the moon or the planets or anything else in our solar system. To make things a little bit easier, we are starting in the countryside under a dark sky with no light pollution. You can find and observe deep sky objects from the city, but they will be more difficult to find and you will absolutely need a telescope to see them. You'll need a telescope to see them in most cases, even in the countryside. Our Milky Way is clearly visible stretching across the sky and the vast majority of deep sky objects we will see, they are at least in our galaxy unless we're looking at another galaxy. We're going to start by looking in towards the core of the Milky Way. There are plenty of clouds of gas and dust in this direction, which gives us some interesting deep sky objects to look at. We're going to start by looking at a nebula. There are a few different types of nebula and they come from different sources, but the Trithid Nebula gives us a nice example of three different kinds. The Trifid Nebula, just here in the middle of the screen, it's called the Trifid Nebula because it appears to be cut in three by these dark spindles. We can also see there are three different colours in this gas cloud. These are three different types of nebula, even if this is really one big cloud of gas. Some of the dense regions of gas are absorbing the light from the stars behind them. These are absorption nebulae. This reddish area is hot gas, gas that's been heated up so much that it's emitting its own light. This is an emission nebula. This bluish hazy region around at the edges, that's gas and dust that's caught the light from stars and reflected it back in our direction, a reflection nebula. Different nebulae have different causes and do different things, but in general we can see whether they're producing light giving us a lovely glowing colour, whether they're reflecting light, which will often have this paler colour, or if they are dark, absorbing the light around them. Nebulae like this, uh, where we're seeing a lot of dark clouds of hydrogen, those are often areas where stars form. New stars form, although it does take individual stars quite a long time to get going. Looking a little bit higher in the Milky Way up here, we can see some of these dark clouds of gas in reasonably hot regions. This is a red emission nebula, and we can see these dark spinels here. So this is the Eagle Nebula, and around the top of these dark spires and pillars, there are new young stars blowing the gas away from them as they go. Once you have a group of stars formed in one of these clouds of gas, the light and heat they produce will blow the gas away from them. This will leave you with a group of bright young stars that are still close together in the sky, like the Pleiades or the Seven Sisters, which were mentioned in the previous video. Here they are quite close to the horizon, so we'll pull back and move a little later to give them a chance to rise higher in the sky. If you were looking at objects low in the sky, you're looking through our atmosphere at more of an angle, so it will appear a little bit more faint and fuzzy. The higher an object gets the sky, the closer it is to the middle of the sky especially, the better your view will be. So taking a close look here, this is an open cluster of stars. And this is normally what we get from a young group of stars that has blown away the cloud of gas around it. These are very often within larger galaxies. This is an open cluster of stars. It's got open space. We can see the spaces between the stars. But it does also have some nebulosity, some fuzziness. A nebula really just means cloud or fuzzy. And nebulosity, cloudiness or fuzziness. We can see that fuzziness here. A nice pale bluish colour, so presumably a reflection nebula. Young clusters of stars are often open clusters. Whereas outside of the Milky Way, we have old stars that have wrapped up together. Stars move through the galaxy, and once they reach the edge of the galaxy, they might be pulled away joining the gravity of other stars, forming globular clusters. To find those, it helps to bring up some hints. There are a lot of globular clusters out there. We're going to take a look at the great cluster here in Hercules. A globular cluster is, well, globular. It's a ball of stars. And if we take a closer look here, we can see that it is not so open. We have a couple of bright stars here, pretty much in the foreground, but we can see that this 
dense ball of stars. These are big groups of stars wrapped close together, very often at the edge of the galaxy orbiting around it. Stars go through quite a journey on their lives, uh, heating up, cooling down, producing different elements. We can find globular clusters, old groups of stars orbiting other galaxies as well. We've had a look at the Andromeda galaxy already. We're going to take a look at the Triangulum galaxy here. You can always check out my previous videos if you'd like a close-up of the Andromeda galaxy. Zooming in here, we can see the main galaxy Triangulum is a clear spiral galaxy similar to the Milky Way or Andromeda, but there are a lot of other labels in here, other objects associated with this galaxy, and a few of those would be globular clusters, these balls of stars that have moved to the edge of the galaxy, become wrapped up together, and now orbit the galaxy as a group. That's really what makes the cluster of stars a cluster. Their gravity is binding them together and they're traveling as a group, whether that's a young, new, open cluster or an older globular cluster around the edge of a galaxy. Stars, of course, eventually come to an end, and this gives us a different type of nebula. Looking in the direction of Vega over here, we will find the Ring Nebula, which is very aptly named. These nebulae were called planetary nebulae. They have such a circular shape, they were often mistaken for planets, but this is much bigger than any planet. That should stop it running away. Stars over their lifespan produce different elements, and once a star starts making iron and heavier elements and metals, it's not producing as much heat. The star will swell up, cool down, and if it's a small star like our sun, it will shed its outer layers into space. So these are hot clouds of gas, this hot sphere of gas moving away from the old core of the star. There are different colors here because there are different elements made by the star's fusion. In the center, we have a white dwarf, which is really like an ember. It's not an active fire burning anymore. It's just still hot from being in the fire. Stars produce new light and heat from nuclear fusion. White dwarfs, they're not going through nuclear fusion anymore. They simply retain heat from when they were the core of an active star. That's what will happen to smaller stars like our sun. If we take a look over in the direction of Cassiopeia, we will find the remains of a much, much larger star. There's Cassiopeia. We're going to be looking for the Cassiopeia Alpha Supernova Remnant, which is a fantastic name. It is quite faint out here in this direction. Luckily, Stellarium can help us by allowing us to search the sky. This is a very useful feature in a lot of software like this, and it's found in various apps that you can use under the real sky. So here we go. We can still see those different colors from different elements produced by the star, but when a larger star, much bigger than our sun, reaches the end of its life, it still cools down and swells up, but it collapses under its own weight. That implosion can produce things like neutron stars, quasars, and even black holes. The layers of the star are blown out from the center of that implosion, and that bounce back, that response to the implosion, that's the famous supernova, those massive explosions that we see. There are a few different types of supernova, but we will leave that for another video. Cassiopeia Alpha is the fantastic remains of a supernova remnant, whereas the planetary nebulas, like the Ring Nebula in Lyra, they're the remains of a much smaller star, more like our sun blowing up. Zooming back to see the whole sky, you can see there is a great density of visible deep sky objects in the banner of our Milky Way, in this path that we can see here, and so it is a great place to point your telescope even if you don't have these labels to help you. If you're out in the countryside and you're not sure where to look, try to find the Milky Way or at least the Summer Triangle, point your telescope into it, and you might now have a fair idea of what you're looking at. Whether you find a fuzzy cloud, you might be able to see different colors and figure out what type of nebula it is. You might see a cluster of stars or a field of stars. You'll be able to tell if it's an open cluster or a globular cluster depending on how densely it is packed together. I do hope you get a chance to see some of those objects in a dark sky or a city sky. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to press the like button. And if you enjoy this kind of video, then please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also check out these videos on my website, greenbeanscontent.ie. Until next time, hopefully I'll see you then.